the attention of the President of the United States of America, Mr. Barack Obama. My father, Fulton Leroy Washington, has been incarcerated with a life sentence and physically removed from my home since I was age two. It is through your representation that many African-American families are able to find a sense of hope and comfort to the brokenness we live as normal in our own households. To bring this hope closer to my own restored reality, I write this letter in support of the clemency and ultimately freedom of my father from his incarceration. Having become a published self-taught portrait artist and teacher of the arts facing a life sentence makes this man not only a mastermind of power and unlimited capacity of giftedness, it also makes him an American hero. Wife, man. Come on, wife, man. Welcome home, Daddy. You know, I never asked you before. What's the best cut of the day? The first one or the last? Right after I eat. Oh my God! So I'm trying to call <laughs> it the middle. Hey, nah, you good? I'm still good. I had several barbers over time. One in particular that comes to mind is a guy named Jeremy. Nobody would let him cut their hair because you know he was just starting out. So I let him cut my hair. And however messed up it is, the line crooked or spots on it, I would walk the yard and defend him. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you in prison? 21 years. 21? Yeah. So basically your whole life, you know, while you was doing whatever you're doing, becoming a barber. Mm -hmm. I was doing that, becoming an artist. In 1997, I was wrongfully convicted of three nonviolent drug offenses. The people that I was working for at that time were under federal investigation, and I was arrested as part of that group. They claimed that I had purchased chemicals to be used in a manufacturer of PCP, but those places I've never been in my life. I was sentenced to life in prison based on my prior convictions. The judge didn't think that a life sentence was appropriate in this case, but due to the mandatory minimums, he was forced to impose a life sentence. Take pictures of your voice and your eyes. Are you? Yeah, I'm gonna have to paint that nice. one. That, that <laughs> smile, all of that. Is she beautiful? Ain't she? Um, yeah. she oh, you. sorry. If you're downstairs, please make your way upstairs. We have a special announcement right now. This really is not just a show about me. This is, this is actually something that was put together for you all. It's for the community. You know, I left one community in, incarcerated, and I come home to another community, and I'm sharing what God gave me to share with the world, and I'm here sharing it with y'all. Why is it that I went to prison, wrongfully convicted, and did 21 years? I asked him the question while I was doing the journey. He told me to look around. I looked around, and I painted what I saw the best that I could. These are the stories of an experience of people similarly situated as I was of what they went through in life. What you see here is what I traded my life for, day by day. With all of that said, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for being here. I bought paintbrushes from another inmate. I had been watching and looking through the window of the guy's painting, and I wanted to try it. I stopped counting at 900 and something, but I averaged between 50 and 75 creations a year. While you're painting, sometimes you can just hear the world around you. And sometimes in those very soft-spoken words of quietness, 
you're able to see images of a reality that is so profound that it comes out in the form of a painting. Yeah, so this, this specific piece, Cali Car, you know, I, you know, I like, in, in prison, this would happen now. Each little group is called a car. Mm, like, okay. what, what, what car you run from? What okay. car you run from? Oh, okay, I got you. So this right here represented Cali, Cali Car. car. Okay. When, I, when I started to picture both my son and I are both doing uh, life sentences at the time, I just put me and him. But I started to take everybody who came from California that would bring me a picture and wanted to be in it, I would recognize their life inside the picture. And it just became the Cali Carp. Mm -hmm. For me to give an opportunity, when you listen to their story, mm -hmm. for them to talk about the 20 years, 40 years, 100 years census that they had to do, pretty much knowing they was gonna die mm -hmm. in prison and that it, it almost deems their life almost worthless mm -hmm. without somebody reaching out, grabbing them and putting them all together and say, hey, this is a real person. These still are human beings. Yeah, human beings, yeah. What I see here is, I see Compton, I see Inglewood, I see L.A. Because these people are like people I see going up and down the street. And plus my daughter, you know, her boyfriend and his brother was in prison at the same time. You know, this picture right here, man, I don't know, every time I, I, I look at this picture, man, my heart actually hurts. I hear you. I mean, it's hard. I mean, how do a father sit back and, and see his son? He never believed. If you read some of the letters and he thought that pops you crazy, man, you're going to die in jail just like me. Mm -hmm. Mine was always on hope and his was always on despair. Mm -hmm. and, but for me to get out and to be on the other side changed his life. I mm -hmm. need to go in there and give him the hope that I gave a lot of the federal inmates, that his life has mean he's a real person. I would paint pictures for other inmates telling their stories and what's going on inside of their homes. So it became an avenue that built bridges between a reality and the fictitious world of incarceration. It became a bridge that built relationships between a father and a daughter or a father and a son, you know, a husband and wife. That's you? <laughs> you went down the oh, my job. God, man. Brother Skull. That was good, man. You know, you know what's funny? The day is the day I went to prison 20 years ago. It's crazy, man, to see you out, man. We just in the park, man. Yeah. Just, you know, ducks and people. And, you know, one thing I never had in there, watch. I don't know if you did, but I never had a calendar. I no. never counted the days. Half yeah. the time, I didn't even know what day it was. Yes, yeah. I barely knew when my birthday was. You know, a lot of people on the street used to be mad at me, like, man, why you didn't call? It was my birthday and this and that. Yeah. You can't, you can't. You can't even. You can talk about it, but you can never make a person feel it. Yeah. Me, I just settled into the prison life, but you just knew that you was getting out. And I was like, wow, you know, watch well, got a life sentence, man. And yeah. you know, cause I'm thinking that he's starting to lose it, man. Yeah. And I think all the time, we was the ones that was lost. Cause all the time you knew you like, man, I'm going home, man. Yeah. Emancipation Proclamation 2014 is the very last picture that I created and painted in federal custody. I had an opportunity through visions to prophesize my own release from prison as I pled to the president for mercy. Emancipation Proclamation was an inspiration by God that led me to the original Emancipation Proclamation that featured Abraham Lincoln dividing the territories for the slaves. I painted into the picture Obama in the place that Abraham Lincoln was. I took out the generals and I replaced them with Eric Holder, with Loretta Lynch. The painting ended up going to Neil Eggleston, which was a White House counsel at the time, and he shared it. And we believed that Obama saw it as well. And soon after that, I was granted a commutation of my sentence. You have two new voice messages and nine saved messages. New message. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Leroy. I'm wishing you one too. <laughs> Happy birthday, bro. I never question God on what he's doing with his time and what he's doing in my life. These images, he's the one that gave them to me. 
God had came to me in visions and dreams and in words that he was there to protect me all the way through. And he delivered on that. He delivered it. I want to thank everybody. I really appreciate everybody coming out to celebrate um, my birthday, to celebrate my first year out of federal custody being home. But also, you know, to be here to celebrate my daughter's birthday, which is two days after mine. So I just want to just give thanks to God that blessed me to be here because it's, it's almost like a miracle. You got ice cream? So I know what this is. German chocolate cake is my favorite. I have my own recipe. I spice ice in the middle, German chocolate size, German chocolate spice layer. Mm -hmm. there you go. Happy birthday, son. Thank you. Happy birthday, daughter. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's your own tune? That's my own tune. That's how I get down, though. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Because I made y'all, mm -hmm. because y'all are half of who I am, then I could do that. I could say happy birthday to you. Huh? And I'll accept it. And off to a little pitch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Lily and Bam, listen, mm -hmm. you know, my experience in prison, I, I, I witnessed a lot of fathers like myself who had left their families behind. What is it like from, for a daughter to be raised up those years without a father? Um, it was, I think, a little harder for me when I was really, really young. I know that sometimes my dad would call and I would get emotional and I didn't understand why I was getting emotional. All the kids I play with, we don't really have dads. Our dad gone, you know, my dad in jail, something on happened. Vacation. My dad on vacation for a little bit. You that, know, that's, something, that's, something. That's the line. Right, something happened. You know, my dad's away or, he, my dad just not here. He's, not here. He's free on the streets. He just don't want to be here. And I think growing up without a dad, you idealize yes. the parent that is not there. But when you don't know a parental figure and you grow up and you start learning the real life things and, you know, just parts of life that maybe don't feel good, it's hard to swallow. Those things affected me and so it created distance. And so with that, by the time I was coming into adulthood, Dad was a foreign concept. It almost felt like I don't have a dad. Fathers are gone every day in our neighborhood. Yeah. We didn't grow up in a neighborhood where family and unity and marriage was something that was sacred and held down and held together and kept close. That's not what we saw. Yeah. I was 22 years old with a son to raise and not a male figure in sight. Yeah. Every one of my brothers was in prison. My daddy was in prison. My uncles are in prison. It's just me. Yeah. So when you ask what it's like, it's me taking my son to every prison you've been to from the beginning. He was born January 11. You were taken on February 14th. That's one year and one month. And it's not something that I take lightly because I drug my son to the example he had as a grandpa to prison. For 20 years, I did that. Every place they moved you, I drug him. In the snow, in the heat, it didn't matter. So when you ask me, what it's like to be on the streets with my father in prison, as abnormal as it sounds to some, it is absolutely normal. At 21 years of age, I made the best decision of my life and forgave my father for any grudge I had against him and let his love beyond my emotional walls into my heart. In the past three years, I have been able to attest to knowing the greatest man I have ever known as my own father. The most precious gift he has given me thus far is his unwavering and unconditional love. And I see this trait expressed for my father towards everyone. His way of loving people and the way he gives his all towards the best for others is not limited towards his immediate family, but it is truly who he is at heart. It is my hope that his story and ultimately his freedom becomes America's own example that there could be life, greatness, and powerful impact in our most troubling circumstances. We need our heroes, we need our leaders, we need our strong educated black men in places of influence and positions of guidance we need our families restored, but most of all, 
We need our fathers. With great honor and appreciation for your consideration, greatest regards, Anisha Washington. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. That was a good one, girl. This is my new life as an artist, and I'm looking forward to the time to paint history and life as it's going on now, from the perspective that's not covered by the media, that's not covered by the newspaper, uh, more of an inside perspective straight from the people. I have to tell what's going on in the thoughts of my mind and, and create a storyline to my grandchildren and the unborn to know who I am and what I was and what my life stood for. Looking back, I guess that was the purpose that I was able to walk that thing for 20 years.